Grateful hearts need no special season to offer thanks to God. Life abundant in itself, reason for praise. In the face of love's mysteries, given such bountiful expression, what gifts of praise have we? We have gifts enough for praise, our hands, our strength, our singing hearts. Let us worship God. Good morning. Welcome to Canoe Camp Church but the individual's expression of their faith is welcomed. We welcome those who are joining us uh, by virtual, by Zoom. We appreciate you taking the time to Zoom in. Josiah will play special music, Where Love Flows. <laughs>
between meals and takeouts, we did over 50, and we received donations of over $200. Very good. And we had lots of people having lots of fun. <coughs> yes. That's the important part. Right. And the DCF is having their gathering in Williamsport on the 20th of February. The regional minister, Thad Allen, will be our speakers with questions and answers. And they would like reservations in by two Sundays from now. So if anybody is planning to go, please let Calvin know. <laughs> There's more information on the door out uh, as you would come in. There's a little uh, sign. In case you want to know what you're going to eat. Yeah. We just throw a speech to itself. Any others? Beautiful day. Offer the peace of Christ to those next to you. Peace be with us. The hymn of uh, opening prayer hymn, Child Seminole 134, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. <laughs>
morning again. The title of the message is The Greatest Mystery There Is. I am beginning a series of messages on heaven. And I am going to read Job 14. I have it there from 7 to 17, but I think maybe I'll just take the time and read the whole uh, chapter. Uh, it's actually Job speaking in this, in this part of it. And so I will read. So man wastes away like something rotten, like a garment eaten by moss. Mortals born of women are a few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away, like fleeting shadows they do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can, who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the numbers of his months. And you have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone. Till he has put his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again. And its new shoots will not fail. Its roots will grow from old in the ground, and its stump and its stump dies in the soil. Yet at the scent of water it will bud, and it will bring forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid down. He breathes his last and is no more. As a water of a lake dries up, or a riverbed becomes parched and dry, so he lays down and does not rise, so the heavens are no more. People will not awake, nor be roused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave and conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you have set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag, and you will cover over my sins. But as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away the stones, and the torrent washes away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once for all, and they are gone. You change their countenance and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offspring are brought low, they do not see it. They feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. That's a depressing start, isn't it? Very. <laughs> I think I'll leave now. Huh? I said, I think I'll leave now. <laughs> Well, the, the, the question that we're dealing with was, is, is heaven, and, and it's uh, one of the greatest questions for sure, is there an afterlife? And, and the whole idea of afterlife is not uh, the way we understand the thing, it has progressed. So, uh, so we got the answer to the greatest question this week, and it is a groundhog's reflection or a shadow that it casts or it, it either sees or don't see. So, according to the groundhog, the greatest mystery has been solved. Spring is early this year. <laughs> it is also Black History Month. What is the greatest question or the most important question you would like answered? That is, I, after all, I, I, I think all of that, it, it, that question is in the back of our minds, no matter who we are. I'll get some statistics later. So this is a basic introduction to a, a series of, of, service, of sermons, and I'm going to use this magazine here that was given to me 
Uh, I like the divisions that it made, and so we're going to spend a, a quite a bit of time in the next uh, days ahead and on the question of the afterlife. And for, the, for this message, the question is, what awaits us? Is there an afterlife? Now, according to Joe, he didn't really see an afterlife until the end of the age. And he would sleep in the dust of the ground, and that is called soul sleep, or sheol. It changes through time. We'll know more into that later. If, if we all uh, knew without a doubt, now if we knew for sure, certainty that there is an afterlife, would this knowing affect how we live now? So how would you change your life if you know absolutely with certainty that there was an afterlife? We probably are running out off the cliff. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, and it was a good one. Well, with certainty. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so you're saying we're just all going to talk about suicide at the end? Yeah, we knew there was a big afterlife, and I'm like, oh, you're going to think that's why we don't know? Huh? <laughs> you don't know. That's why maybe we don't know. So the other side of being in the doubt is what keeps us living on. I think people, if they really realize a lot of them, they would probably try to do better. I mean, it's that what your understanding of the afterlife is, is there, is there levels in the afterlife that you have to go through, you know, to attain, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, so you're talking about purgatory and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. Right. So it, it all depends on what you believe. Right. So I'll throw this question in was later. So does what you believe affect the afterlife that you have? You think part of that for a minute. In what ways would it affect our lives now if we knew for certainty we had an afterlife? The answer that. We'd all jump off the cliff. The problem is. <laughs> Only on a bad day. Only on a bad day? I don't think life is that bad, but I would want to jump off the cliff. No, no but if we knew there was a beautiful afterlife, you know, it's like, okay, let's go now. Yeah, but then they say that suicide is a sin. So, so that, that, that's why they say suicide is a sin, to keep people from. Kill them, you know, take their life and, and so so that, that's why you're on down the road. But that, you're right. That so so we have uh, blockades put in our way. Uh, so the next uh, pressing question would be: What would it take to convince us? What would it take to what? What would it take us to convince us that there's an afterlife? I already know there is. But how do you know that? Convince me that. What? Convince me then. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you see you signs know. of people that have passed, you know, things that have gone on, they come back to you, you know I mean? Subjective experiences. You can't prove what you believe by faith. No. No. That's the problem. That's the problem. A lot of people have it. In other words, you're convinced of it, I'm convinced of it, we may be all convinced of it, but the certainty is not there, but yet we believe it uh, subjectively through our experiences and, and you know, how we saw, like you say, other people dying and, and what have you. Well, well, I don't know if I'm convinced of it, but I hope there is. Is that the same as convinced? No. I'm not. No. No. Faith and hope is what drives the Christian faith. Well, That's one of the things that drives the Christian faith. There's a lot of people in this world that don't believe it in it at all, and they're agnostics. I mean, they don't think that... Well, that's a little bit later here. We'll get some, some fashion statistics. It's not as bad as what you think. So, so uh, what, what experiences do the, do the track? What, what, you know, what proof would we need? You know, what would you need, Colleen, to, to prove that you, uh, that there's an afterlife? I guess I would have to really see some way that I've loved that as past that could really convince me of that. Because I don't know if it would be just my imagination when people say, oh yeah, I've seen this or it came to me in a dream. Well, you know, is that just your love for that person that's convinced you that they came to me in a dream? I don't know. So a dream is, is still subjective, even if a person came back to you and said, hey, I'm this person, and then managed to get you and say, wow, that was a trip that they played. <laughs> you would be easily, you know, convinced about that. You know, say he 
there, you know, in a room or something, and somebody would say my mother or something came back and sit there and talk to me, and I felt it was so real. But I don't know if anybody's had that to really say to convince me. I just hope, yeah, I hope that there is, but to say I'm convinced, like you said, we're convinced of that, you were, no, I'm not convinced. I'm not quite sure that some people, even though their deceased loved one came back and sat down and talked to them, like you said, over time they would say, well, maybe I just imagined. Well, that could very well be too, because, you know, there is no solidness of but we'll Come back and give it to me again, and then why not? Just because you believe it or hope that and want that doesn't mean just because what you believe is so. So, so when I started running up into Newfoundland uh, many years ago, I asked my, myself the question, I know it might sound a little whatever, simple, but how do I know that Newfoundland exists once I take the boat and come back to Nova Scotia? What can prove to me that that still exists. What, what are you saying? That the that, 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 that Newfoundland lit, that is, is actually exists when I leave. What? That Newfoundland? When he oh, goes, so, when he goes, well, you know, that, that so then maybe I don't exist when you go on the truck somewhere. <laughs> I don't know you're, that. You're <laughs> <thinking about it. laughs> I probably don't to you. <laughs> That is an argument. Be careful what you're going to say next. <laughs> that, that is an argument that's put forth. You know, that is an argument that's put forth. I know you're laughing at that. that. That's a viable argument. Because I can no more prove that than you can prove that if, if your mother came down and sat next to you and talked to you and then laughed, then you say, oh, well, yeah, you'll, you'll start doubting it and there's a vision or something. So the same applies on both things. Or would you, I, or would you be so convinced because they say, they say, like heaven is more real than what we know real right now. So if that was the case, would it seem more real that you would be convinced or not? After a time, would it be like, eh, yeah, like you said, you gotta just imagine that. Right. You're very confused. You know that? Me? Why am I confused? <laughs> no, because I'm making you think, right? I'm, I'm like making you question what you believe. I'm still trying to wake up here. <laughs> So what is real and what is not? And, and believe it or not, there's a lot of time and effort put into what is real and what is not. Okay, how do you prove what you say? What is real? How do you explain these people then that are psychic that can tell, you know? I mean, they can say, oh, well, your loved one passed. This is what happened to him. I mean, this, this, and this. And they know it right down to the nth degree. There's no possible way they could know personal things, because I've had that happen to me. And it happens to my son all the time. I mean, when when some, you know, when he, someone in the family dies, they go to him, he sees them. And they talk to him for a minute, and then they go on there, what they say they love him, or they tap him on the shoulder and say, I'm here, but I'm, le I'm leaving now. I mean, how do you explain that kind of stuff? That's, I'm not going to try to explain it, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to doubt it, what I'm saying is it's a subjective experience by the individual. It can't be duplicated again by science. So you can't, they yeah. can't observe it and prod it and prod it. And, and, you know, uh, uh, near death experiences. Now they claim that they can put a person in a state of mind with a near death experience. Uh, but I'm not, I don't know whether that's later down on too. So uh, again, you rely on subjective experiences and there's a whole, uh, array of them all on the table. You know, like you heard the voice of God, you had a vision, you had a near death experience, you had a healing. Any number of one of these things are all subjective experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and that's, that's the problem. So the whole thing turns on the, the idea of faith, hope, and believing, trust, and love. Non, non objective things. That, 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 that's the whole. Christian idea. You, you don't do actions, but it, it, it's hinged on a more uh, subjective faith, hope. Yes, but I have a problem with that. So anybody that don't have faith or hope, they get no afterlife? No, I'm not saying that. But, but I, that's I, what I, I'm saying. I, I, I'm saying that, that 
the road to having a, a, uh, a belief, a hope that satisfies, is hinged on non tangible things, non or, or subjective things, faith and hope. It's an individual experience. That, that's the, yes, I, I, I can't. There's no way. You said it hinges on faith and hope. Yeah, it, it turns on faith and hope. If you had no faith or hope, and then all of a sudden you had an experience, they had no faith and hope, and so does that mean, see, the after life is still there for them, too? Yeah, it's still there for them. Okay, it, it's, it's still there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, what you say I, I, I'm, I'm not. You've got to have the faith, and you got to believe, like you're always saying to me, you got to believe. Well, I believe a lot of things, but some things are unbelievable to me. <laughs> Uh, but, like <laughs> but but doubt is part of it. All, all these other uh, negative aspects of our life are, are still part of faith and hope. Faith and hope is not knowing. It, know, it's not that's certain. Here and now, and, and, huh? That's here and now that you have the faith and hope. Yeah. Once, suppose well, once we get there, we won't need no faith and hope because we will, we'll, we will realize for certainty and experience what is more real than that. I, 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 my personal feeling is the afterlife is more real than what this is here. Once we get there, and once yeah, we that's what they say. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. we see I, I, look, a glass darkly. Yeah, that was one of the things I was going to bring up. Sorry, no problem. We're on. So, 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 J Job uh, asks the question uh, again: Does mankind live again? Because even back then, we've been asking these questions for a long time. I think ever since humanity has walked the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, paleontologists, which I was going to say here later, uh, you know, have been uh, the whole way back, uh, you know, uh, 200,000 years ago, you know, uh, they found burials of, of how they buried their dead and, you know, with tools and what have you. And, and so this has been a haunting question for all of humanity's life ever since we've been here. And the, the psalmist, even the psalmist, who uh, uh, was worried about, for you uh, will not, in, in Psalm 16, 10, you will not abandon my soul in Sheol. He was worried, and Sheol was a, a, an underworld type of thing. We talked about this before. It's a semi-conscious, conscious, not conscious. It depends on how you define it. But that was a later day thing, too. That was kind of after the psalmist, and what have you, that's about 500 years before Christ, 600, 700 years, somewhere along the line, these things uh, started getting developed a little bit more. But no one believed back in them times that there was an afterlife for every individual. The best you went to was Sheol, into the, and you slept, as, as Job said, we sleep until the end of the age. And, and that's what the best you could hope for. But how do you know what the hey. end of the age is, or, or if there is going to be an end of the age, any more than they don't put there is hope that there is an end of an age. Is it, what, what does that mean? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. I'm asking you. You're the one that said that the end of the, the age. Well, the end of the age in, 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 in the first cycle, and the way we can understand science now, would be when, when we can't have life on this earth. That's how I would see the end of the age. But it can also be an end of an age of a time in which you thought a certain way and then something else began. So I would say the end of the age in which, which Job was talking about was when uh, pointing to the time of Jesus or uh, uh, when things were going to dramatically change in the, in the way we think. So well, Jesus if you were a great dad, how would you be thinking different? Uh, but he was pointing towards that time and saying that that's going to be the end of the age, not necessarily the destruction of the earth. Which is nowadays in the prophecy is, is about the you know the world will end and then there'll be a new heaven and new earth. So back for Job and the psalmist and what have you, he was uh, they were pointing towards the time of being resurrected out of the grave. That's why Paul, Paul, and I am totally convinced that Paul's greatest thing for him in six heaven was the resurrection. Nothing else mattered, and he says so. The, the idea that Jesus Carol. was resurrected and, and there was proof that he was resurrected. Here's a part, see, you smile, but, you know, if you read the story, you have three, uh, three or four versions. The person who came here, took on a bodily form, died, rose, came back, and they saw him, there's accounts of it, we still scoff at it. That's what I'm saying. No matter what, we're not going to be convinced. Well, you know, to me, 
Yeah. 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 Y
I'm a hundred, so hundred percent sure, which I think a lot is want to be. But I, I can you, never you, say you this tell one. anybody that. Oh, this. I one. must know. I can't. And and even when you die, I know. <laughs> You must have a lot no, of fun. No, 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 I must what? Don't blame me. I said, you must have a lot of fun living with this woman. Yes, I do. I don't have a conversation. No offense, just but I don't think you would be convinced because you would even doubt a physical experience at the time. That's your opinion, that I'm not saying I would doubt. You're saying, see, that's what you think you know. Because you, you asked the question, how do I know, how do I know so many times? <laughs> no, but you think that you know what I would do, what I would No, do. I'm not saying I know that. You just got done, did you? I, 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 I'm saying, I'm not convinced that, along with many other people, whether what it's going to take to convince people that, yes, there is an afterlife. Well, based on my own experiences, as a child growing up and having premonition, having and working as a nurse and working with people that were in the process of dying and did pass, I firmly believe that there is an afterlife. You know, if you've got a man sitting there telling you, I'm going home, and I'm saying, Oh, really? Well, you can't go home, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night. Maybe we'll talk about discharge tomorrow. He said, No, he said, I'm going home now. And he dies just like that. So, how do you explain that? The only way you can explain it is that there is an afterlife. Right, exactly. Right. Near death experiences of books, thousands of books of, of uh, uh, now in print of people having near death experiences. I mean, th there is enough evidence to support, even science is supporting, an afterlife. It's still based on. Faith and hope. You, you, it, it, you can't get away from it. it. There's no not there is no knowing with certainty as science wants to say about an afterlife. You might as well forget it. The only way you're gonna know with certainty is go there and not come back. And then you get God sent. People it's have gone there with and come certainty. Back. <laughs> People have died and come back. <clears throat> but we don't believe it anyway. What? We, we don't believe it anyway. That's not true. I Jesus came, that. Jesus is a prime example, uh, and, and, and nobody, you know, so what other individuals that you're going to hold up and say, that person came back and, and told us? Well, my father did. He came back and visited you? No, when he had a near-death experience, when he, when he coded at the hospital. Okay, okay, so, so you're talking and about near-death experience? Yeah. But that's an subject of experience. And it's near death. See that bothers me too. Near death. It's no. not. Well, you can't call it death because it's not. There was no pulse. There was nothing. I mean, and I've worked on people like that too. So, when, and when you have no pulse, you have nothing there. So, well, what about they say your brain activity too? I know they say your brain activity. I know. <laughs> Just we have, we have a whole segment on like, near death experience coming up, so let's not get too on the floor like the second. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I always said that. Okay, Paul. So there, there's not a real clear sense of what the kingdom of heaven, like Jesus was talking about, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. There's not a real, like, this is what it's going to be like. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John talked about it. So, but there's really not a whole lot of explanation of what exactly it is. And can afterlife be terrifying enough? Some people have near death experiences that are, that are hellish. So, not every near death experience is good. You know, I'm just saying, we all think when we die, we're just going to be all this goodness, but we were terrible in life. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't get when you yeah. know. Yeah. I see we're not even going to get to the article today, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what people, why people think they're, they're just going to be automatically different and good when they weren't in life. So that, 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 that is punishment. Go ahead. So I believe to... I'm going to heaven. What? I said, I believe I'm going to heaven. I just believe in something of levels of heaven because yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm pure enough to go 
to Jesus' right hand or left. I am flawed. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy if I, if I wake up and I'm conscious and, and when I die in, in an afterlife. I'm good. I don't have to be, have a, a high place at the right hand of God and all that kind of stuff. You know, if I'm consciously aware, you know, through the dying process, or I blink. But there's, there's so many things to that, because what if you were reincarnated right now as Kali, but you were somebody else before? Who are you going to wake up to be conscious to? But all, all, all aspects of your reincarnation. Yeah, there, are, there, are, there are tons yeah. and tons and There's so tons many that just say, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yes. I had a neighbor who swore he was an Indian chief way back when. Yeah, he lied to me? <laughs> he remembered his previous life. I think when you come on your soul reincarnate, you know, you have you're still learning things. You're still trying to there's it's, things it's that you're still time, so many years that's not enough. No, no. No. Not unless you're perfect like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 take that back. I'm <laughs> getting away from all not a confusing person. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think just one thing happens. What? I don't think just one thing happens when we die in the dying process. It, it isn't like we all go to heaven and it's all bliss and everything is solved. I think some people do come back. I, I think that's why I tend to believe that what you think and how you believe does affect your afterlife. Mm -hmm. Or it may influence it. It might not make it totally the way you want it. But if you're totally convinced in the reincarnation, you may get your wish. It's because it, 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 it's all time based, and, and you know, eternity is not time based. So you're talking about two different sort of concepts. So if you want to come back and live another 70 years, what's the big deal? I think a lot of it is just like you, like you said, I want to wake up and be conscious. Conscious of who? You as Calvin Yoder right now? Well, that's the only Calvin Yoda right now. But what if you lived before? You don't want to be conscious of that entity that you were at? I don't time? know that one. You don't know that one, but you roll when you get there. Uh -huh. Well, then I guess I can decide which cow I like. <laughs> and maybe it's not for you. Like a short fat one that calls that anyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of questions. I, 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 I mean, they're not silly questions, really. I think you think most of us are just so terrified of losing ourselves as we know it's not. Right. But we might be more broader than what we yeah. can ever imagine. Yeah. As I say, and there's many entities to you, maybe that many mansion things, these mansion is your own bodies that you have incarnated in. So you can be many you know individuals I mean? within that mansion. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the Bible. Many rooms, meaning many lives, yeah. different aspects of many lives. It depends on how you uh, uh, understand Jesus' word. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So he's talking about many mansions. We reincarnated many times. Is that speaking yes. within ourselves, or is that a larger picture of where everybody goes? So, Can it be both? I think it probably could be both. I think so. Hey, um... Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to say, it's yeah. not a cut and dry, you know. Well, if you're talking about like death. with Job, he's so depressed and he, you know. So, Calvin, somebody, I think. Shane would like to okay. say a word. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, sorry. Um, Matthew 17, 12, and 13 talks about uh, John the Baptist being the reincarnation of Elijah. I, I couldn't hear all the questions. John the Baptist being the reincarnation of Elijah, which, yes. Well, they thought that. Huh? The, 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 the Jewish leaders at the time didn't, didn't think that, that he was a reincarnation of, of, of uh, Elijah. And why would they think that? Because they must, because I say there is a reincarnation in the Bible, but I think well, about it. Again, because, because it's been added in this and that, put in and out. But it's there. Well, there's a lot of things that are in there. Which one's the one that went up to heaven in the, in the chariot? Is that Elijah? That's Elijah. Okay. He never died. So Elijah never died. Yeah. Uh, there was another one. Uh, we don't know about Moses for sure, because he went up on the mountain and supposedly died and got buried in. 
Y'all we know when y'all, if he was taken out, I mean, it, it says he buried him by the dude house. So he could have went out and, and was taken out. Um, uh, who was that other one? Uh, I can't think of what it is now. Uh, Enoch. Enoch. But he came back now. Paul said to have a kind of the third heaven. I think that's a near death experience or a uh, body experience. Or was there, mm. I hate to say this, aliens. And I mean, <laughs> and, <I'm aliens. laughs> and I mean that as there's life out in the universe oh, other yeah. than us. And I know people laugh when I say that because they don't think no farther than, you know, oh, good little green mm. man. No, I'm serious when I say, could it be they took him off and they're cracked? See, I, 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 I'm, this is heaven, I'm not discounting other life and other planets and that are much further advanced than what we are. I think there's them and there's also a light beings, angels and what have you that don't need to crack. So I think there's two of them. Uh, and so I, no, I don't laugh at the idea of the aliens and I, I think as time is going on, that idea of uh, extraterrestrial life on other planets is becoming more and more an issue that, yes, it's, it's highly possible. But the universe is so vastly, with so many planets and stars, and that it's, it's almost, why would God, whoever created, uh, create this life here, this you know, planet? I, I just find that to be really troubling. And you see, I think that's a lot of us when when people say it's you got to believe it, what you believe, you know, because that belief can be very limiting, too. No, so well, yes, well, well, no, well, don't well, say well, no, yes, a belief can be very limiting. What you believe is what you believe, even though it is doubtful. You still believe that you're doubtful. It's what you believe. You believe that you have doubt. You believe uh, uh, what, what you believe is I don't know what you're trying to say there. Did uh, anybody else? <laughs> well, you know, he, well, you know, belief can be limited, but that's why we have to study, and that's why we, you know, and based on people's experiences now, if, if for what I say, if no one's willing to listen to what I, what I've experienced, and they just blow it off, <laughs> that's a that's limited. Yeah, and so, that's what I mean. I mean, you have to know the thing. And you know, if you're going like with Joe, that man was extremely depressed. And and a lot of people that are depressed in this world today feel like he does. Like oh, yeah, without a doubt. And yes. then a lot of them feel that the only way out is through suicide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I understand that. Yeah. You know, because I've been in that situation once. When you feel like something so hopeless, you, can, you have nothing to look forward to. And you're going to die anyway, and sooner or later. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't, you're like you're in it's a big, dark, deep hole, and you can't get, get yeah. yourself out. You see no light. So Jesus brought light into the world, you know, and brought hope, hope and love, yes. and, you know, and, yes. um. I, I, I think the idea of Jesus is so overlooked. His teachings and what he brought to this world is so overlooked. And Christianity, in some ways, has usurped it and used it for their benefit for a group of, of an ideology. When it should be a global, Jesus is a global idea. But let me throw this in here. Can we be captain of our own soul to say, when I want to exit this world? What is so different than if I was in a car accident, somebody murdered me, or I say, I want out? Can't we be the captain of our own soul, in a sense, to say that? Only if you're talking about God. You, you know, well, what's terminal illness? Depressed, you have to be being depressed, being, you know, oh, life is so hard, I'm living on the street, I'm homeless, and yeah. what is determined? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't like to say suicide is a sin, because we do not travel in these no. people's shoes. No, I you, you know, but I know how that's what you said. I was a good chair, I know. And it's a good one in a way to keep people from not doing right. it. Right. So I, I don't agree with that. I don't believe that. Right, but, but I mean, it has been taught that. It has been taught so, that, yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw another question out to you before we get done here. I'm, I'm not going to get to the article and see that. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. So, so the idea of uh, an afterlife. So when does that start in humanity? Is 
Is that an evolutionary process? So what when you what when, uh, when Native when, Americans believe that the Viking believe that it's uh, I'm talking about that before uh, in the Neanderthal world and back. So as mankind began to develop, their consciousness began to rise and become self-aware, then they became self-aware of an afterlife. Is yeah. that an evolutionary process? Well, how do we know they were thinking as an afterlife? Maybe they were just honoring their loved ones in death by, you know, burials and stuff. But still, they had a, a, an awareness that there was something missing when the person died. A, a story that, that I, I read one time by yeah, a paleontologist yeah. who wrote that, you know, early on, they, they saw this person who was alive, and suddenly he's laying on the ground, or she's laying on the ground, and there's something missing. So they recognized that there was a, a, a part of this individual that is no longer there. And so they, they said, well, it didn't go into the ground, it went up to the sky. And thus the idea of heaven gets developed. So it's up there, out there. I don't know, because I don't think I don't know it. What, you know, if there is a first man and a woman, and they had sex or whatever, and didn't know why, and the, the first baby, were they astounded that something, another human being came out? Has, has it been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know the, wouldn't that be terrifying? In a way, to like, how did that happen? And would you know all this time until did they see it in the animal? So, well, I guess my point is, do we in our soul come in with some kind of sense? There's more to you than what you know. Oh yeah, definitely. You don't know how you got here. You don't know where you're going. So then we're programmed to think this way. Yeah, in a way. In our yeah. DNA and our genes. That's another argument. Yeah, in a way, I think we are. We have a script somehow. Okay, so uh, I, I want to wrap it up, up, up here real quick. So we use uh, different words to describe it. Uh, paradise, promised land, <coughs> Shangri-La, Utopia, the shore on the other side of heaven. And uh, we already talked about Jesus referring to many mansions. And uh, uh, 200,000 years ago, uh, as far as we know, uh, uh, there were burial sites where, you know, we got dug up. And uh, the end was all 130,000 years ago. They buried them with tools. Uh, so we've been doing this and dealing with this question for a long time. Uh, humanity has been wondering this uh, question of an afterlife in a place where the dead live again or continue to live. Uh, this is no means, we are no means the first generation to ponder these questions, that's for sure now. And we will not be the last. Uh, uh, we, we are not, uh, as Paul says, we, uh, uh, we look into a glass darkly and we can't see clearly and, and we have been gazing into that glass darkly ever since humanity has walked and pondered these questions. And uh, I think that's going to stop there because I can't even begin to get into the article. There's no way. So we'll start the next time. Which is okay, Bob. Maybe what Paul is saying is that Jesus has left the light on for us. That's good. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. Jesus didn't even light on for us. Yeah. yeah. So, so when people die and have a near-death experience, Jesus' light is at the end of the tunnel? Mm -hmm. Or he showed us the light anyways. He showed you the light. He gave us hope. We all come I mean, in with that light. It's up to us to develop it. And do you know what I mean? The night. You don't use your light. Lose your light by lighting another light. That's the beauty of fire and light. I mean, you can go from, you can make endless, infinite amount of fires and light. That's a mystery in itself. How, how, how you can take a light, a candle, a light, how many different candles, and then your candle that you started with is no less extinguished. You also have to think about one thing, too. Most children, up until the age of six, can see people that are passed. Yes. Yeah. Because their eyes are still open. And they're for a show of them wherever we came from. But they can see them or they can see people from the past, like my son did. Because I asked him one time, who are you playing with? He said, you know, so and so, and, you know, a little girl, a little boy. And I said, well, what are they dressed like? And he explained what they were dressed like. It was just 1800 Civil War era. So the woman who owned the house, I asked her, 
if and they said that they had died early and i asked them and he said yeah they had died of milk fever it was her great grand the great grandparents children had died i mean this is so how do you explain that stuff many 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 children it's locked up in our gene at the dna and genes up and to the age of six and they're seeing dead people yeah, but they say they live, but it's like dimensions. Yeah, they're right dimensions. here beside us. We just don't see yeah, them. Right you, you know, when it's a, I mean, I fluctuate all the time. I mean, this is how you work. So, <laughs> you, you know, we, I don't really we will continue next Sunday. Yeah. I will probably preface uh, the, the article with some other. Uh, I, I, I would, I, I am going to try to give an explanation of why we don't see the other world. Okay. So. Are you going to do that now? No. <laughs> <laughs> because we have limited <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. And then I'll go into the article. And I think the article gives some statistics and I think some interesting fact findings. And I see we're going to be on the subject for a while. So, uh, we're, we're probably referring to a lot of what we shared here, plus more. So that, that's all great. So, amen. So we didn't get, it, you didn't get too far in your sermon then. I, I, no. <laughs> First five minutes. I, I did manage to get most of most of what I printed out, like three and a half pages, uh, two and a half pages, maybe. You know, we don't put out that. So I did manage to get a little bit, of it, but it's okay. It's fine. It's no That's problem. That's the beauty of this church. Well, know. we have to learn to be quiet. I guess it's going to no. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm not quiet. I never have been. So. Why? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be quiet about that. <laughs> uh, where am I? Uh, Josiah will not play blessings. It is a blessing.
to live this new life. My brother is in favor, but he's resist. I'm getting resistance from family members of her, of her children, and I'm just, she's not living in a safe environment, and I'm very frightened, I'm very concerned, and all I am getting is resistance everywhere, and I don't know, I just need a lot of guidance and the wisdom to know uh, what to do to help her. I mean, it's difficult. It's, yes, some situations are so difficult that, yes, which direction do you go? And the thing is, I was a psych nurse for 30 years. I could help people, I could direct them, I could find places for them to go, I could, you know, and work with social workers. And just when I was in Maryland, here I feel like I'm completely helpless. It's like I'm just. You know, and I'm trying to help her, and she's just in this deep, deep depression, and I, I, it's really weighing on my, on my soul, and my mind, and my heart, and I'm really terrified for her. I really am. It's sad, but sometimes you just, you, you can't fall into the hole with them. That's what I say to people. You, you, you can't fall into the hole with them. You know, I, I'm sorry you can only go out of the limb or down deep as far, only so far. You have to uh, protect your own soul. I, I, that's how I believe. And, and I believe the Lord rests up to the Spirit and God and, and, and Jesus. You, you have no other choice at some point. But I, I think you have the obligation or, or you know, this, that you should 
should watch out for your own soul and your own care. You reach over as far as you can, you put the rope out as far as you can. And, and that's all you can do. I mean, some people, you can offer as much help, but the help has to be received also. And, and, and you know, you can't. Like you said, you, you can't, you, you leave the horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink. And, and that, that is so true, I think. It's so hard for us as humans to accept that. At what point do you say, okay, that's it? But you can still hold out hope. I mean, my brother and I held hope out right to the very end. It, it just, you know, it, it, it was basically a hopeless situation because he made it that way or he lived that way. I mean, that's just how it was. But yet, I never pulled the road back. It was all there. But sadly, he moved on from this way. Well, another concern I have is um, for Ted Smith, you know, because Ted does a lot of work around here, and he's very, very valuable to all of us. Um, he's been so sick. He's still sick? Yeah, he's still sick. And, you know, his brother passed. I mean, he went and got his brother two weeks ago now. He's come up for his uncle's funeral. He got him in Philadelphia on Saturday, took him back Sunday. And then Tuesday morning, his brother dropped dead. I mean, you know, he, the man's been through a lot of emotional loss, physical loss, and, um, you know, he's, he's still, he's still sick, so. It, he's gone through a really, really rough time. Uh, the uh, whole family is... That's a different story. Yeah. Huh? That's a different story, but he has lost two brothers within the last eight months. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and he's had COVID, what, three times? Yeah. Uh, so it's been tough. And it's a dear, very dear uncle, you know, I mean, he lost the uncle like two weeks, a week, two weeks before his brother died, very, very unexpectedly. So, you know, he's feeling a lot of guilt, you know, about that. And um, that he about didn't that spend now. time with him. And, yes. you know. Well, he is really going through a lot, isn't he? What I said was Mal yeah. Hall. Yeah, and I was going to say, why'd you say that? Because he, the funeral coming up, he has a loss too, and his family. Mm -hmm. You know. Everybody stares at me. <laughs> what are you talking about? It would be his wife's, ex wife's brother passed. Which one? Uh, Dave Rice. The funeral's gonna be here on Saturday at two. It's gonna be here. Yeah. If they were members here at one time. Yeah, do you do you remember all that? The yeah. races when they came? Okay. Uh Gwen and Ed lived up on the hill near us when we moved up there. Okay. Um their parents. Yeah. Um uh, one Rice girl, the sister of Mel's ex-wife, actually married a cousin of my husband's. So, oh. they're cousins in a way. Well, the funeral is this Saturday at 2 o'clock. We won't be here. Oh, well, I, I think really everybody would understand anybody from the congregation can come if they would like to find you. Anything else? Hey, Calvin. Yes, Shane. Um, prayers for patience as well as healing. I keep overdoing it and causing myself more pain since my fall. Overdoing it? I heard. He's been since his fall. Oh. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, I'm getting a stress test this Wednesday. Uh, I'm a little stressed about it, but <laughs> not really. I'm not quite sure if it's been. You're doing what Wednesday? A stress test. A stress test? Yeah. You know, whether well, you're running and shoot something up and in and do all this kind of stuff. So. Attach all these uh, electrode things to you. You're going to have wires coming off mm -hmm. from yeah. all over you. I have to go off my blood pressure medicine, 
So my heart rate runs wild. So that let me have to say a little bit. I don't like my heart running wild. Well, I don't know. It's just yeah. for two days where they really you got an opinion that you would You still have residual in there, but they want they want they don't want that in there. Yeah, but just say your heart's gonna run wild because of that. I don't know. That's my imagination running wild. Careful what you believe. I'm just cautiously aware. <laughs> At least you can run. Huh? I had to have the chemical one because I can't run. I, I have had both. Oh, so. I, can't, I, I don't remember how to run. I get I walk fast. Yeah, I know. I don't know if I want to run either. You'll be fine. There's two people behind you. They'll, they'll catch you if you fall backwards. I'm sure I won't be fine. It's all what I believe. It's safe, right? Yeah. I mean, he's done it before, but still, I, I understand. It is. Uh, you know. Yeah. Well, they told me they're going to put an IV in me. That means they're going to shoot something off me. So, or they're prepared for me to drop over. Like, <laughs> they like to be prepared, yes. Have you done one in stress test? I've had one every four or five years. Uh, yeah, well, that. mine was five years ago, so. I've aged five years. So, so you're doing the stuff that with the, they kind of could inject you? I, the, I think they're going to put dye in me to see walking? the flow that goes in. What? I think they're going to put dye in there that, that uh, and, and they want to check the flow. I think that's what, they're not going to, I think I'm going to actually have to run. Oh, okay. But he has done the new thing before. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. I have done the one place that you can be I've done both of them. Well, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. That's what that makes it more even more concerned. What are they doing? You ask them. Well, that's what I told them. They ask. You know, you're talking to you're people who are actually going to do it, so you, you know, it's okay. I'm sorry I stressed everybody out about my stress. <laughs> you know, we're good in your expressing your concerns and everything, but we're here to support you. But I am alone. Well, I, that, that's very natural. That's, yeah. that's natural. That's not. Yeah. The older you, know. you get, the more you stress because you know there could be things wrong. Yeah, I know. Well, the last time I ran into you, get down to the third stage, you're huffing and puffing pretty hard for an old man like me. But they would there. stop, and it was they stopped that, and it was really yeah, they stopped. I mean, they've done that with me. They stop you, you know, yeah, you can't. I, I know. So you'll be all right. I'm stressing about my stress. She says you're going to be all right. I, I'm, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Let us pray. <laughs> Great God, we appreciate the many blessings that you give us. We have faith and hope. We share our love. I said the breakfast. We thank you for the ability that we have to do that to the community. The laughter, the conversation, just the joy of sharing is wonderful. We thank you for this blessing. We thank you for this church that shares the thoughts or ideas. We are truly blessed. We can think differently. Yes, we can get stressed out about stress tests, but yet we share and love one another. Thanks to be with Dan, Reverend Ed Allen, our regional minister, as we journey this region. Thanks to be with this church. Lord, we, if someone is looking for a church with an open mind and a heart to share, Guide your feet to, in our direction, Lord, we pray. For the prayer list, those who are on it, those who are not here with us, for whatever reason, watch over them. Watch their feet as they take a step by step. And may they hold on to the guardrails of life. Even if it is a king, we ask you to be, or to grant this world peace, there's a lot of people. We don't all understand this world sometimes, the hate, why we want to kill one another. Help us to learn the ways of peace. Connie, 
Tyler's traveling next week. Watch over them as they drive. She's always blessed by her family. And Levi, we are all blessed by our families. We're thankful. Lord, watch over Shane and he does not overdo it. Stop him. We pray. Exercise is good, but help him to be careful. Hang on to the guardrails of life, Shane. Listen to them. The world in which we live is a tumultuous place. Even our country. Arguments after argument help us to come together, work together to solve our problems. Sharon, who was stressed about her sister, she prays that she will be safe.
God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 